When building applications, you sometimes need to use and connect to third-party APIs whether you're working with a single API or multiple ones. The process usually goes like this. You would probably dig into the documentation of each API that you're trying to integrate with and play around with the API to test it out and get it working for your application. This process is usually time-consuming and let's face it, not all API documentations are as good as Laravel's documentation. Also, each API has its own API key and may require a different process to integrate it. This is where Rapid API can help. You can integrate and manage multiple APIs from a single platform using a single API key and SDK. You can think of Rapid API as sort of a GitHub for APIs. It has a huge marketplace that contains thousands of APIs where some are completely free and some are paid, while some of them provide free tier plan that you could use. Under each API cards you will notice these three identifiers which are popularity, average latency and service level. Popularity simply means how popular the API is on Rapid API. It's an internal score so the higher the number the more popular it is. Average latency is just the average response time from the API in milliseconds and the service level is just the percentage of successful API calls. You can use these identifiers to kind of help you decide which API to go for when there are many options available. In this video we're going to integrate a Laravel application with a Currency Converter API. I've already set up the basic Laravel project with the basic UI using the Tailwind CSS so that we can just focus on building the backend part of it to integrate with Rapid API. As you can see, it's just the basic UI of currency conversion. If I enter a number and hit convert, it simply returns a hard-coded value that we need to fix so that instead of it being hard-coded, it should come from the API that we're going to integrate. If we look at the code here, this is the controller method that gets called when we hit the button and here you can see the hard-coded value. So let's open the marketplace and search the currency conversion APIs. Let's type in the currency and hit search. And sure enough, it gives us a bunch of APIs that we could use. If we hover over on the API, we see some of the endpoints as well as whether it's a free or a paid API. This one is freemium, which means it's paid, but they have a free tier. I'm going to pick this one because I'm already subscribed to it, but you could pick any other API that you like. On the API page, we can see the available endpoints on the left side, the request information in the middle, and code snippets and response or results on the right side. You can test the API directly from the page if it's a free API or if it's a paid API then you need to be subscribed to one of the API's plans. If we switch over to the pricing tab we see the plans right here and as you can see I'm already subscribed to the free plan which gives us 100 requests per day and anything above that will be charged at that rate. So let's test this API. Let's switch back and hit the test button and sure enough it returns a response. As you can see it used the default values from the request here and you our API key as well as the proper host and URL. And in the response we see the information about the currency conversion. Also notice the code snippets tab here. You can use these snippets to help you integrate this into your application. If we click the drop down we see a bunch of languages that have the snippet available and PHP is one of them. Let's click on PHP but we're not going to be copying this and using it in our application because we're using Laravel and we can make use of HTTP client rather than use curl directly. But We'll still reference this snippet back to copy some other details like the headers for example. So let's fix our app and integrate with this Rapid API to do our currency conversion. So what we need to do here is that we need to use HTTP facade to use HTTP client to make the API requests. And you don't have to use facade, you can inject through constructor or through method if you wanted to, but I'm going to use facade for this example. So we'll do HTTP get and we need to pass in the URL as well as some query parameters, right? Let's open up the Rapid API and we need to copy this URL here and we don't need to copy the whole URL because we'll be passing parameters as an array. So we'll copy this and we'll put it here. And for the parameters, we see that it needs the from to an amount. And because my form input names match these names here, we could simply pass the validated data directly here. The other thing we need to do is that we need to pass some headers because we need to 
pass the API key as well as the host as shown right here in the curl code snippet. So we could simply copy this snippet here and put it within the with headers method. So we'll call with headers and pass it here. And we can simply fix this up here and replace double quotes with single quotes. Now don't worry about me hard coding the API key here. We're going to refactor this in just a bit. Now let's assign this to some kind of response variable. And if failed, we can throw some exception with fail to convert currency message as well as the status code. Now there are many ways you could do the error handling here. You could throw validation exception with some user friendly message that you would want to display to the user. But for this example, this is enough. And now we can extract the converted amount from the JSON that is returned. If we take a look at the rapid API again and switch over to the results here that we ran the test for, we see that rate for amount is the value that we want to access. And we can access that through the property of the currency code that we're converting it to that is within the rates property so we can use dot notation to access the rates for amount property here so if we switch over back here we can do amount equals to response json rates dot data to dot rate for amount and this should be good enough let's test this out and make sure that it actually works let's get rid of this let's open up the page let's hit convert and sure enough it has changed to the proper value so as you can see we've now integrated with rapid api with few lines of code and we have a working currency conversion api now let's refactor this and make it flexible because we want to be able to integrate multiple apis right what i want to do is that i want to extract this out of the controller into some kind of service class so let's inject currency service class here and let's simply get the amount by calling some kind of method on the currency service something like convert and we can pass the from to and the amount variables so we can do data from data to and data amount of course you could pass it as an array if you wanted to but i prefer to pass them as separate arguments now i'm going to take this whole thing from here and extract it into the currency service class let's create that class within the services namespace and we need to create the convert method and within this method we'll put this code in the from is going to be string the two is also going to be string and amount will be float now again, don't worry about the hard-coded key here. We're going to fix that up. We need to change this data to compact from to an amount. And as I mentioned before, you could simply accept an array of arguments and pass that in if you wanted to. I just prefer it this way. And we'll replace this with two and we can simply return this and cast it to float. In a real application, you would of course have a little bit more error handling here to ensure that this actually exists. If it doesn't, maybe it would throw some kind of exception. But for this example, this is enough. Now let's test this out and make sure that this still works. Let's refresh the page, enter 100, hit convert, and it still works. Let's switch back to the code and we can improve this even further. If we wanted to integrate more than one APIs, we would be kind of duplicating this code here. And I want to avoid that. We can improve this and make it more flexible. The goal is to extract this into its own class. We can inject that class into the constructor here. So we can do a construct and let's call this class rapid API service and we'll promote this to protect the property and instead of doing this we can simply do response equals this rapid api service get and we'll pass in the host as well as the url and the parameters so we can pass in this host this url and these parameters now we can create these properties and we can set these to these values so the host is this value and the url is this value now if you wanted to you could of course improve this and combine these into a single variable or single property if you wanted to but i'm going to keep them as two properties this way the api call itself is abstracted away and we can reuse it in multiple api service classes so let's remove this from here since we no longer need it and let's get rid of this and let's create this class I'm going to create this class within the services as well and we need to create a get method so we'll add the get method and paste this code in and we can simply return it now we'll replace this with host we'll replace this with URL and we'll replace this with params 
So as you can see, this Rapid API service is kind of a wrapper around the HTTP facade here or HTTP client. If you did not want to use HTTP facade, you could inject the client directly in the constructor and use that instead. Now the only remaining part is to get rid of this API key from here. We can get rid of this and simply accept the API key in the constructor. So let's create a constructor here and let's accept the API key. We can promote this to a protected property as well and this should be good enough. We have a slight problem here because we're expecting API key in the constructor but we're not directly creating instance of the rapid API service. We're simply injecting it in the constructor right here. So how can we fix this? One way we can fix this is by using service providers. So let's open the terminal and let's create a new service provider called rapid API service provider and let's open that service provider and within the register method we can simply bind the rapid api service class so we can do this app bind rapid api service and we can bind it to a closure where we simply instantiate this class ourselves and we pass in the api key here of course we should not be hard coding the api key here so instead we'll get this value from the config file and you can put this in any other config file if you wanted to but i'm going to put within the app config file for now we also need to register this service provider right so let's open the app config file here and we'll add the rapid api key here and we'll get the value from the environment variable we also need to register the service provider so we'll go down to the providers and we'll add it right here and finally i need to add the environment variable to my env file so we'll do rapid api key equals this and that should be good enough now let's test this out to make sure that it works enter 100 hit convert and sure enough it still works we can change this to a different value hit convert and it still works so as you can see it was simple enough to integrate rapid api with the laravel application and we made it flexible enough to be able to use multiple apis that's why we have this rapid api service class that simply wraps around the http client and this way we could simply create other service api classes like currency service for example define the host and url and the method inject the rapid api service in the constructor and make the proper method call pass in the host and url now this is a wrapper around the get method you could build this up to create another method here for post requests and so on so this is it for this video let me know what you think about the rapid api thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a like share and subscribe and i'll see you next time